Hi, <coughs> hi everyone. Welcome back to Operations Research. Today we will talk about applications of integer programming. Basically, we will show you、uh, a few examples that、uh, can be formulated as integer programs. Okay. Then with the integer program, and once you solve it, you get a solution that helps you to make some business or managerial decisions. Okay, so we will focus on information, uh, integer programming formulation. Mainly, we will talk about three kinds of applications. We will talk about facility location problems, machine scheduling problems, and the vehicle routing problems. Okay, basically, they are talking about where to build your facility, how to schedule jobs to machines, and how to route. A particular vehicle, okay. They are some very important、uh, issues that you need to deal with when you、uh, manage your operations or when you run your business. Okay, so we will talk about them one by one. So let's start with facility location problems. One typical managerial problem is about where to build our facilities. Okay, so for example,、uh, if you are entering a new market. Where should you build your convenient stores? Okay, you want to build a few so that you can catch, uh, capture a lot of consumers, and sometimes you don't want your convenience stores to be too close to each other, but sometimes you want them to be close enough. Okay, so that's about convenience stores. Sometimes you want to ask how to build warehouses or distribution centers. For example. Once you have determined those convenience stores location, mainly based on market conditions, then you need to make sure that you have enough capacity for warehouse and distribution centers, to 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 manage those convenience stores. Okay, because you need to re procurement for them, so you need a few distribution centers. You don't want too many because that's too costly. But you don't want to have too few because then transportation between distribution and convenience stores may be too inefficient or expensive. Similarly, you need to ask where to build your factories. Do you want to be close to the、uh, raw materials, or do you want to be close to the market, or do you want to be close to your competitors? Because then that particular place. May get、uh, more investments and so on and so on. Okay, you also need to consider、uh, the the utility functions there,、uh, the salary of persons, and even some regulations. Okay, so where to build your factories, and actually,、uh, even if you are running a government instead of running a business, you need to decide how to build、uh, power stations, fire stations, or police stations. Okay, so all these questions is talking about actually where to locate a scarce resource. Okay, typically you only have a limited number of um a、um, budget or a limit number of, for example, fire engines or ambulances. Okay, there are some um potential locations to allocate to locate these resources. Okay, just like locating facilities to potential locations, <laughs> then you want to ask for this limited number of、uh, resources, or for example, police officers, or even、uh, ice cream machines. Oh, how would you allocate the limited ice cream machines to、um, your so many convenience stores? Okay, that's a very similar issue. All these problems, okay, oh, can be conceptualized to facility location problems. Okay, it doesn't.、Uh, when we are using mathematical models, it doesn't really matter to, uh, to distinguish whether you are locating machines or locating a physical facility. Okay, you just want to decide where to build, uh, a few items. Okay, so that's our facility location problems. We will give you some concrete examples, so later you will see what do we mean. In this particular lecture, we only talk about the so-called discrete facility location problems. You are given a subset of locations. Okay, 
and uh, uh, sorry, you are given a set of finite locations, or maybe ten, maybe one thousand, and then you choose a subset of locations to build your facility. Okay, that's discrete facility location problems. There are also continuous facility location problems, and even for discrete location problems, there are just so many, or so many different kinds of problems, so many different ways to solve them. Facility location itself can、um, provide contents and materials for one semester course. So of course we don't have time to talk about many of them. We will only give you a few、um, very classical examples. In general, when we are conceptualizing a facility location problem, we talk about demand nodes and some potential locations. What we want to do is to build facilities at locations to serve those demands. Those demands may be retail stores, and we want to build distribution centers to serve or to ship products to all those、uh, retail stores. Or we may build fire stations to cover cities, towns, and villages, or to help our people. So in general, we are talking about、uh, demand. And、uh, some kind of supply. Okay, facility location problems are typically categorized based on their objective functions. In this lecture、uh, or in these videos, we will talk about three types of facility location problems. The first type is called set covering problems or set covering models. We want to build as few number of facilities as possible to cover all the demands. Okay, we will precise precisely define what does mean what we mean by covering, or there is a maximum covering problem. You have a limited number of facilities to to build, and given that you want to cover as many demands as possible. Okay, Cl、uh, closely related to set covering, but as you can see, they are different. Finally. There is a so-called fixed charge location problem. We are not limited to uh to to the number of facilities. We also are not required to cover everything, but we want to find a balance between benefit of covering demands and the cost of building facilities. Okay, so we will talk about these three types of、uh, facility location problems, and in particular. How they may be formulated into integer programs. So let's start with set covering problems. Uh, in general, suppose we have a set of demands i and a set of locations j. In general, they may be different, but in many uh applications, they are actually the same thing. Uh, but in general, they can be different, or they have some overlapping. Okay, but in general, they are not. Required to be the same, the distance or traveling time between demand i and location j is given to you as d i j. So you can imagine that as the, um, for example, the distance from a warehouse to a retail store, or the dis distance or the traveling time from a police station to a particular village. Okay, so that's some given number to you. We define something as a service level, small s. What's that? We say that demand i is covered by location j, if d i j is less than s. So that just means um, facility j is close enough to a、uh, market or to demand i. Okay. If you have a village in a mountain, and then you build a police office at Uh, for example, the downtown of a city, then typically the distance from that、uh, police station to that village is too far. You won't say that when anything happens at that village, you can send a police officer from the city to that village. Okay, so you need to cover. You can cover a demand only if that location is close enough, and with the given,、oh, with the given s. We define cover according to the distance and s. So the question would be how to allocate as few facilities as possible to cover all the demands. 
So let me give you one example. Suppose I have, uh, let's say, four demand nodes here. Okay, and these are demand nodes. And also I have some supply, or, or I have some potential facilities. Let's say this one. Okay, uh, uh, between each demand and each facility, for example, there is a distance. Okay, so you know what's the distance, you know what's the distance, you know what's the distance. And then you ask whether that distance is smaller than S. Okay, whether the traveling time is smaller than S. We can do the following. If that distance is short enough, then we connect that corresponding demand and the potential location. For example, okay, this seems to be close to each other. This seems to be okay. Uh, or maybe, for example, yeah, these are okay. There is something to keep in mind. We are talking about distance or traveling time. And when you draw them on your figure, of course, those distances are actually uh, based on the route you have, okay? For example, from here to here seems to be closer to from here to here, right? But we say this is uh, a shorter distance, probably just because uh, there is a river here, or there are some very huge mountains, and so on and so on, or there may be no route between here and there. So, uh, graphics... Are, I mean, figures are one thing, problems are another thing, okay? Uh, it's always possible to have very weird parameters provided to you, like the distances. But anyway, you know, those numbers are given to you. Now, if we say uh, we want to cover all the demands, okay, all the demands, how may we do that? Uh, one possibility is to, okay, let's choose this one. And then uh, choose this one. This is a way to cover all the demands because then one, two, three, four, all the four demands are adjacent to at least one selected facility. Okay, that's good. And actually, in, in this particular problem, this is an optimal solution and this is the unique optimal solution. As you can see, uh, this problem is so special that if you want to cover this guy, you must select this facility. And then, if you want to cover this guy, you need to select this facility. So there is no very high flexibility. But anyway, oh, that's a concept. You need to cover all the demands with the minimum number of facilities. Okay? And our purpose for this lecture is to tell you how to do that with integer programming. Turns out that it's not very difficult. First, we define a parameter called aij. We say that aij is 1 if dij is less than s or 0 otherwise for each pair of demand and facility location. Okay, so with our graph, this just means that two, uh, two, two, two nodes are connected on the graph. And then let's define the following variables. We say xj is 1. If I choose that particular location J to build a facility, or oh, and zero otherwise, oh, that's indeed our decision to make, right? We want to decide for each location whether to build a facility. Okay, then we have the following formulation. I want to minimize the number of facilities I build. So it's just this one, okay? Minimize the sum of x, i, j. That's the total number of facilities I built. And the key here is for each demand, I need to make sure that at least one close enough facility is built. Okay? Well, let me show this with an example. Suppose we are still talking about that previous <coughs> example. Like this. Uh, let's consider, for example, this guy. Okay, this is a demand, and we have four. Uh, sorry, what I'm talking about. Uh, this is a facility, 
and uh, we have four demands here. Okay, if you talk about this facility and uh, for example this demand, then we say okay, suppose this is uh, let's label them as uh, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Then what do you have? You know that a uh, three one is zero. Okay, a three two is one, and a three three is zero. Okay, now three the first index three is the demand node, and the second um and sing a uh, second index one two three are for um, facilities okay then with these uh, parameters what do you have for this constraint uh, once you plug in those 0 and 1 there it just tell you that your x2 must be greater than or equal to 1 uh, for that particular demand node okay for that particular demand node because we are talking about demand 3 then according to this parameter we know x2 must be selected okay x2 must be selected we need to satisfy this for all the demand nodes and once you have that you make sure that all the demands are covered well, finally all those uh, xj's are binary variables because you cannot open half of the facilities okay um so this is the set covering problem. To minimize the number of facilities you need to cover everyone. Sometimes you talk about a weighted version. For example, when building facilities um, requires some cost, and you want to minimize the total cost, total spending for opening those facilities, then you talk about a weighted version. Okay, that's set covering. Thank you.